it's no different from what I'm playing today. So right. it just allows me to be me, which is mm -hmm. the key thing. Like, no. if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this in its purest form. Right. And I don't want to feel like just because I want to be in the iconic spaces, right. such as Cafe Mumble, Cafe Mumble. Um, <laughs> I don't want to feel like I have to play just the typical 4-4 four -four fillers, right. you know, fist pumping. Mm -hmm. No, I, I need to be me, be uh, because that's what people are going to remember me for. Taking you guys on a journey of the music of the past, present, and the future, welcome to Mambo Tales. We are here outside, right in front of Cafe Mambo with the amazing Kitty Amore. She just killed her set here at Cafe Mambo, <laughs> her first set at Cafe Mambo. Um, thank you so much for thank doing this. Thank you for me. having me. Thank you. It was an honor. Can you tell us, you know, going into your first set here at Cafe Mambo, this is a, a special venue, yeah. I would say, for a lot of DJs especially. Um, Talk us, talk us through you going through your first set and now you finishing your first set. When I got the call up, I was like, okay, it's Mambo. And sometimes because of it being so iconic, you get into your head a lot. <laughs> and it was like, okay, do I do Mambo style or do I just do Kitty or more? And it was like trying to merge the two. Mm. And coming there, seeing my name and seeing the people in there and I was like, do you know what? Everyone here is just for music, right. regardless of whether you're like right. giving floor fillers or whether you're actually just playing a nice journey. So I'm doing um, me. Yeah, yeah, basically. Right. <laughs> and, and it eased the pressure off. And coming off of there, I feel good. I feel good to be part of the story of right. this, such an iconic space, um, but also to do this before going off to the big one as well. It's right. like loosening my limbs a little bit. Right. You know? uh, it was an amazing set. Thank we you, really enjoyed it. And I think you can see the people no, there enjoyed it, it too. Um, let's talk about your name. I like I wanted to know where did um, the kitty the more come from? Could you I, I I actually watched a little bit about yeah. it, but I'd like to hear you explain well, it. Well it's just an expression of how I feel about music. Right. It's love and I feel like my being through music is pure pouring love into people because mm. uh, that's what they give to me. Right. I love what I do, I love the sound, I love the people and I love the way it connects with them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a more was the most fitting in terms of who is this being, a being that moves in love with right. music. So That's yeah. wonderful. That's Thank wonderful. you, man. <laughs> so you started like from like the early ages yeah. on the decks yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you talk to us a little bit about that? What form, like, what formed your like style of music? Because your music is just, it's not. You don't, like you said, you don't, you don't hear it here yeah. every day at Cafe yeah, yeah, Mambo. Yeah. But you went and played it, yeah. and we loved it. But can you, first of all, can you tell us like what maybe inspired you? What what were you listening to when you were back in the day? Yeah, well, I mean, my dad, he was a sound engineer and right. producer in Afrobeat in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. My heritage is Nigerian and Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. And I feel like African electronic music allows me to be unapologetically African. Right. Um, in a space where electronic music may not necessarily be opening the doors so much to our well, sound. Honest, Whereas yeah. now, now things have changed dramatically because of the way the sound is infused with Africa and the rest of the world. Right. Um, it's global sound elements. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I'm allowed to identify as an African in global spaces, and that's why I chose the music that I chose. I mean, growing up with listening to percussions and mm -hmm. all kinds of sound elements um, in Afrobeat, it's no different from what I'm playing today. So right. it just allows me to be me, which is mm -hmm. the key thing. Like, no. if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this in its purest form, right. and I don't want to feel like just because I want to be in the iconic spaces, right. such as Cafe Mambo. Cafe Mambo. Um, <laughs> I don't want to feel like I have to play just the typical 4-4 four -four fillers, right. you know, fist pumping. Mm -hmm. No, I, I need to be me, be uh, because that's what people are going to remember me for. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So can you tell us about maybe a specific, do you have a specific DJ or a specific like song, anything that you heard when you first started that kind of got you down this path or anything? Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of, Afro House, mm. it was uh, the early entry points of Black Coffee. Okay. There was a particular track um, called Even Though, and I remember hearing it at the time when in London, Funky House was the thing, it was sped up. Mm -hmm. And when I actually listened to the original and I was like, oh, this is soulful and this has got like some real African percussions in right. it. Um, and then I came to know Kulo the song, a song called Way Baba, 
and that's where it was a done deal for that me. Like it. that, and that was in 2009, 2008. Okay. Um, and yeah, I was sold from there. <laughs> I was like, this is me. Let's talk about um, you. I think I don't know if you were selling them out, but like one pound, uh, you were like. I think you were playing in your high school or what, what, um, like when oh, you were Oh, university. Yeah, 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 university. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk to us about that? You've been playing like yeah. really from yeah. jump, like you've um, been doing this. So whilst I was in university in Nottingham in yeah. the UK, uh, I went to the Nottingham from London mm -hmm. and there was no people playing the music that I like or right. there was no people that looked like me right. in the club spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so in order for me to give the London community a familiar sound and a familiar home, I just took it upon myself with friends and just said, sod it, let's just do it ourselves. <laughs> and we just got together, put on our university parties. At the time, it was one pound. Inflation <laughs> is doing what he's doing, so it's not that anymore. Um, but yeah, one pound entry, it wasn't about making money. It was about giving access to our people, giving access to our sound, but also trying to widen the community from just London, but bring in Nottingham as well and let them know what we're doing at home. That's amazing. That's amazing. So let's talk about, um, let's move on from that. I want to talk about just like your music now. Mm. Like, what do we have going for? I know you just released something recently. Yeah. Um, could you speak about like what's 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 the future for Kitty Yeah, Amora? yeah. So um, my first release of 2023 was a uh, remix that I did for Somadina, a Nigeria singer-songwriter, absolutely incredible. Um, I saw an angel on the roof and wept. Um, out now, by the way, so let's make sure you stream that. Check that out, please, check that out. <laughs> and wept as well. <laughs> so yeah, that was my first release. Um, got big music coming out. Um, actually launching my own label as well, My Harbour. Okay. Um, I'm re releasing my music on that label as well. So I have a track coming. Um, that I want to speak about, but by the time it's out, I will, well, you'll probably see it right, right, um, right. and hear it. Um, and yeah, just collaborations as well with amazing singers, uh, Julia Church, Owen mm. as well. Um, and yeah, the world's more oyster next year, man. Oh, that's what we <laughs> like to hear. Um, could you give us, just a final question, could you give us a little bit of the meaning behind that first track, that first release? First of all, the title oh, itself, yeah. I saw an angel on the roof and wet. And I think it's incredible. That's what I'm saying. I, so I would incredible. like to hear yeah. a little bit more so about I, this. I actually stumbled across it. Um, it's an actual acoustic track. It's not even an actual song song. Wow. And I heard it and I heard her vocals and I was like, I feel like she's never been in my world, but I want to take this into my world. Mm -hmm. um, and Somadina actually blessing me to, to say, yeah, green light, go ahead. Um, and I did it, didn't send anything to her until it was done. And when it was delivered to her and she was like, I didn't even know this was possible because of it being an acoustic. Right. And it's very alternative music. Yeah. It's not even electronic music at mm -hmm. all. Um, and yeah, seeing what it's done and seeing how people are digesting it and enjoying it, I think it's just, yeah, humbly incredible. That is so amazing. <laughs> and Kitty, thank you so much thank for you. doing this thank episode. You. This was Cafe Mambo Tales. This is Kitty Amore. Big love. Peace. Out.